What's going on guys, it's Dill here from Demsec, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at a pretty special device that was sent to me by Pioneer64. Oh well, Pine64 is the company, the device is called the Pioneer64, so I kind of kind of ruined the build up there, but you can see it on my screen. And it, it's another single board computer. And you may be thinking, Dill, you've, you've covered so many of these, there's the Raspberry Pi, the Orange Pi, why would I get this instead of any of those different devices? And I would say, specs. Specs, my friend. So, the one that they sent me, and it's, I don't think it's listed on here, but the one that they actually went ahead and sent me, and I did have to beg and borrow and just get on my knees and say, please, please send me the 2 gigabyte one with Wi-Fi. And, and they did. So this device here has a 64-bit quad-core CPU, a, and 2 gigabytes of RAM, which you're not going to get on any other single-board computer as far as I'm aware, especially for this price point. I'll show you the price in a second. It's insane. And it's got built-in Wi-Fi. And I was like, right, so this is this is a quite a capable device here. What could I go ahead and make with it? And I, I thought back, and I've had this idea for a while where I've always wanted a system in my bag, like a fairly capable Linux rig that I can RDP or SSH into and, you know, perform all my attacks from there. So in this video, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to set up a Pioneer 64 to be used as a backpack hacking rig. As the title suggests in the video, there's no clickbait here, guys. And, well, I'm just going to be running Kismet, but it is a full, and as you'll see in the video, it is a full Ubuntu system, and it runs things surprisingly quickly. So let, let's just get straight into this. So I said, let's get into this, but I just want to show you the price of this thing. So the board is $29 for a quad-core processor and 2 gigabytes of RAM, $29. And the additional add-in Wi-Fi module, which you don't need at all, it's got two USB ports. If you've already got Wi-Fi cards, you don't have to go ahead and do that. But combined, that is that is an, a ridiculously good price. So if you're interested in this, I know I haven't actually showed you it yet, but if you're interested in this, go down to the link below, click the link and check it out. So another reason why I've really wanted to get my hands on one of these is the devs of the device really do seem to support it. Like, this this is the OS we're going to be going with, but they've got absolutely everything available. They've got Remix OS, so you can run Android on it, use it as a TV device. They've got all these minimal... You can even have Gentoo on this thing, which, you know, if you hate your life, you can go ahead and install Gentoo, but we'll, we'll leave that there. But we are going to be doing going for Ubuntu Xenial Mate... And uh, I know it says you think it says mate, but I've I've listened to too many people pronounce it who have authority on this subject, and it's called mate, right? Got that? Um, oh, forgot about a spec, a gigabit Ethernet. So even if you want this as just like a really performant server, it's got you covered. So all you need to go ahead and do download this from one of these links, torrent it if you really want to, but just get one of these, and then fl uh Use Win32 Disk Imager, which I'm not going to do here because we've done it so many times before. And you need to put that onto an SD card. I'm using a 32 gigabyte uh, SanDisk SD card. Link down to everything I'm using down below, of course. And I go with SanDisk just because I've had some reliability issues with other device, other SD cards. So I, that, that's just what I go for. So whilst I'm waiting for mine to boot up with that fresh Ubuntu image on, what you're going to need to do is... For this particular project, it's only got one built-in Wi-Fi card. And I want to use that to tether to my phone. So that one's kind of occupied. So I'm going to be using my TP-Link TL-WN722N. And it's the first edition of it. If you do get the second edition, you might have some issues. But the first edition, if you can get your hands on it, is absolutely rock solid for what we need to do. So we're going to be using Putty. And I've already gone ahead and got the IP address of my device. And it's 192.168.1.92. Yours could be anything. Either check your router or use Advanced IP Scanner, which I've got down here, to scan your network, and you can go ahead and find its IP address. And then, log in as, you can see right here on the left-hand side, the default username and password is Ubuntu and Ubuntu. So there we go. Well, I'm logged into the device now. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, I, I lied a bit earlier on, guys. This isn't a fresh one. I didn't, I didn't really want to completely start from scratch just because it's so easy to get this thing up and running. So the only packages I've installed on this for my purposes, but remember that you can install absolutely anything on this. This is like, it's, it's a full Linux system. You know what I mean? Like, 
it's insane. So, this a package that I'm gonna need to install, and that's apt get install xrdp. And xrdp, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do this because it's already installed, but you, you need to go ahead and install that. And the reason I'm using XRDP over something like VNC is the clients are just seem to be so much nicer than VNC clients. So now that's installed, if you uh, do, hold down Windows key and hit R on your PC and type MSTSC, which is Microsoft Terminal Services Connection, something like that. Um, and then what you need to do is enter the IP address, or this is the same IP address you've just gone ahead and set up here. And I'm just going to connect and it's going to be able to connect to the device. So we're now going to get this login form and it's the same credentials that we just used. So it's Ubuntu and Ubuntu. And just like this, shortly, we've got a full Linux desktop running on a little device. So from here, we can go ahead and do whatever we want. So if we open another terminal, I'm going to install uh, sudo, ooh, we've got a problem detected, it's fine. There's no problems. <laughs> I have to get installed Kismet and aircrack ng. And we already have all of those installed, but you want to go ahead and install these. And that is literally all it is to configure this if you're only using it over Ethernet, which we're not. So, what we need to do is go up here and go to this wireless device here. I don't have the second one connected yet. But you want to connect to your your phone's hotspot. So go ahead and turn on your phone's hotspot. Um, I think that's the best way to do it because then you actually get an internet connection on the device, which could be useful. But my hotspot isn't here. But you know how to connect to a Wi-Fi network. You just click on it, enter the password, and then by default, if we go to Edit Connections here, um, it's actually not coming up right now, which is kind of awkward. But um, when, once that's all set up. Uh, you will be able to go ahead and automatically connect to that network when this device boots up. And then all you need to do is get the uh, the IP address of the device on your tethering network, and you can RDP to it on your phone. Right, so we've got this all set up now, so I guess we need to put it in the back and side. Right, so you can see here now we're logged in via uh, Juice SSH, my favorite Android SSH client, to the device that we have in our bag, the Pioneer 64. And what's really crazy about this setup is we have like a fairly capable Linux desktop running in our backpacks off a little battery pack. So right now you can see here I'm just running Kismet and all I'm doing is just logging what uh, wireless access points that are around us. And totally non-malicious, but what this actually comes down to is we've got a full Linux system in there. So if I RDP into it, which I've done already here, we actually have a full Linux desktop which we can go ahead and interact with and install any kinds of tools on there. And we could genuinely use this as like a walk around hacking device if we really wanted to. Hope you enjoyed this video guys, hope you like what I did, tried to be a little bit more creative. But if you did like it, remember to leave a like rating, remember to subscribe if you haven't already, come and follow me on Twitter because I post some cool stuff sometimes maybe. And um, yeah. Leave any feedback down in the comments, I really do read every comment that comes through and I appreciate you all very much. Until next time, thank you for watching, goodbye.